Okay, so in the previous lesson, we looked at how nodes work and how we create points and how we create lines. We didn't look so much into detail in regards to the different lines, but we looked at a basic line. Now we are going to look at something very powerful and it's one of, among one of the most important nodes in Dynamo, that is the code block. So we are going to look at how you can use a code block and what are the diff what's its power and functionality. So open up Dynamo, open up where we stopped last time, which was lesson one. And now what we did in the previous lesson was we, we used input values to create a point that runs from one place to another. And we looked at using a code block to do this. Okay, so you can see that we had, we needed, we need a total of one, two, three, four, five, six nodes to create this. But the code block is also quite very powerful. So if you type in code block, code block, okay, and let's go back to the node view and you launch it up, okay. The code block can also do something very interesting. So you can type in point by coordinates, okay? You double click that and then you open brackets and you type in zero comma zero comma zero and you close brackets. Then with a semicolon and hit enter, okay? What you realize is that it has just created this same command. Here, here we had zero, okay? So this was zero. So if we look here and we click the pin button, you can see that it has created a point which is zero, zero. So we can again go there and put that as the start point. Again, we have the same output. So despite the nodes being created by Dynamo, a code block can imitate any other node, okay? So we don't really have to do so much of that. So again, we could do the same. Here we had 14, okay? So let's do the second one. Again, we do the same point by coordinates. And let's do 14. Let's say of them were 14, 14. Okay, comma. Okay, so it has created a second one, which is 14. And then we can now go and say the end point is that. Okay, as you can see. So, but let's say we, we wanted to now introduce some controlling points, okay? Now, we have created um, the two points, the nodes. So let's say we want to also create this line, okay? Um, let's give an example. What I want to do is not create the line for now, but I want to use one of these sliders into, into this, okay? So I want to be able to change, let's say the zero point as I did earlier. So again, you can put, let's say letters. You could say, um, for a start, let's put A1, B1, C1, okay? What it's going to do, it's going to introduce those points here, okay? And again, I want this to be B A2, B2, and C2. So what you're seeing here is that when you, when you add the function and then you add numbers, it's going to add them as input nodes here. So now I know my A1, B1 are the first point. So I could say, um, I want my, this to be going to zero. So I can move this here and move this there and move this there. Okay, so these are also in red and I could disconnect this. So I could bring my integer slider and now put that there, put that there and put that there. Again, you can see we are creating a similar um, situation where well, we have the original points and the other points. And what we have done this is we have done this with one node. Uh, we have combined both points by coordinates 
And we can take this a level further. So for example, we can say, let's name this P1, because now we want to create the line. We want to create this command line by points, okay? So we can name this capital P, let's just name this P1 equals, and then we name this P2 equals. So what we've done is we created variables that are P1, P2. So if I'm going to create, let me just name this B line, okay? And I'm going to hit equals two, and I'm going to try typing that command line by start point. So it's going to add the word design script, which is important, okay? So by, by start and end points, I click that. I double click that. Then what I do is I open up the brackets. I type in P1 and then P2, then semicolon and I click enter, okay? So now if I remove this, because I'm not using those input nodes, you can see that with one node, I have been able to create, let's remove this, without having to use other nodes, okay? And this is the power of the code block. The code block is quite very, very important. So now I can keep changing these while having just two nodes. And you may ask yourself, um, what are situations in which you can, why do we have to do this? So I'm going to just open up one of the scripts called I'm going to save this as lesson two, okay? Okay, so I'm going to open up just one of the scripts that uh, uh, did for, that you're going to look at further. Um, and one of them is called the pipe culvert with changes. So I'm going to just open it up. We shall look at how I created this in a further lesson. Okay, so if you look at this script, okay, I've opened it up. It's quite a heavy script. Okay, it's on manual, that's the good thing. So you can see your node view, you can end up having so many nodes. And yet you find that some of these nodes could have been, um, they could have been, they could have been sorted out by just uh, using a code block, okay? So you can see all the different nodes. You have the nodes here, this is where you create the pipe culvert. This is where you look at the daylight and the grid of the daylight. This is where you input the Excel, this is where you create the blocks, and then this, extracts the feature lines from the corridor so that it can know where to put the pipe culvert. So understand that um, code blocks are very important to understand uh, because it can help you in reduction of how many nodes you're using. You could see there we're using almost six nodes um, and we've reduced them to something like three nodes, okay? So let's go back. I don't want to save that, but I just want to open up lesson two. No. So, um, what we did here is one, we've looked at the start and end point. We could, we can use custom values for this. Yes. We, um, we can use custom values for this uh, in regards to the code block and we can use it to create a line. At the same time, we can use custom nodes. Um, we can use custom points, custom inputs and it can create that exact node. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to look at because we have now looked at just two points and two points create one line. So in the next lesson, we're going to think, how can we have more points? Because then that means you have to create many number nodes, but we do not really have to do that. There's a better way of doing this. So I hope to see you in the next lesson.